friends told Kate smoking heroin would make her feel good, they forgot to tell her something else. How bad it would also make her feel. How she'd start to look tired, spotty, and unhealthy. How she'd lose her friends, her looks, and her interest in everything but heroin. How she'd soon have to take heroin not to get high, but just to stop feeling down. How she'd eventually risk blood disease, liver damage, even heart failure. Yeah, I'm still alive, I suppose. Don't be a dummy. Heroin really does screw you up. When we are all waiting patiently at the traffic lights, there's nothing more aggravating than the chap who cuts in. We all know that this show of bad manners saves no time. So don't be rude on the road. When driving on an icy, oily or wet road, if you apply your brakes hard, you might as well be driving a bedstead for all the control you'll have. The same applies when taking a corner too fast. You may not end up where you intended. Avoid sudden acceleration on tricky surfaces. And take it easy when braking. Use your head. And avoid skidding. Weaving in and out of traffic makes you a nuisance and a danger and could lead to disaster. An exhilarating drive at speed, almost like a racing driver. Sometimes the devil himself gets into us. But what's that steam from the engine? Oh, it, it does that sometimes. And the black smoke? Oh! Wait till those cars have passed, then get it over to the hard shoulder and have a look. No water, no oil. Of course, you checked them both before starting out, didn't you? Well, uh, actually, uh, no. If your car is past its best years, be it small or not so small, or not designed for high-speed driving, don't race the engine for long periods. Overdriving can cause accidents. 3,500 breakdowns in one year on the M1. So remember, use your head. Morning. Now for the open road. Hey, you shouldn't overtake a blind spot. It's going to lead to trouble in the end. So don't overtake unless you see the way ahead. When pedestrians are using a zebra crossing, they shouldn't do this sort of thing. They shouldn't dither about. It only leads to bad tempers. <laughs> Let's try again. Now, motorists should approach a crossing slowly enough to stop comfortably and never overtake at a crossing. This can lead to a nasty accident. Remember, both motorists and pedestrians should be helpful to each other. So don't abuse the crossing, ever. Here's George, our cheery knight of the road. Morning. He's looking for something. Here, look at my paint, it's all scratched. Now look what's happened. No door. Perhaps you'll be more careful now and look before acting impulsively. Remember, use your head. In view of the sustained high speeds which are now normal on the new motorways, we have to be especially careful about proper tyre maintenance. Underinflation can lead to excessive wear and overheating and renders the tyre more liable to accidental damage. Worn tyres also reduce road holding capacity by a large amount. And the dangers of loss of control cannot be emphasised too much. So, before setting out on any journey, 
always check your tire pressures carefully. No, not like that. You know how. That. And just you keep those tires at the proper pressures. Yes, he's checking the spare as well. So remember, use your head. George and Betty's night of romance, things got a bit too hot to handle. Baggage, madam? The outcome of a sentimental impulse could mean a sentence of death for the animal you love and couldn't leave behind, and for you or someone like you, death in a manner that is beyond description. Whichever way you look at it, rabies means death. If you must make a journey when it's snowing, Clear. Hello, I've got two, um... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, what are you doing? Taking that man's number. Who do you think you are, a friend or something? Sherlock, it might be serious. The boy was right. So, most people are ordinary, but some aren't. Some of them are like the man who assaulted Teresa. Remember, in real life, you can't tell which people are good and which are bad. So, whatever your age, it's up to you to look after yourself. And take care. You don't want to end up dead or in hospital. You know what to do. Say no to strangers. When he left school, Dennis Trout, like most of all, is a clown about. But on factory floor, the tricks of Dennis to his mates became a menace. For instance, a compressed air hose, a useful tool, but deadly handled by a fool. But metal filings in the eye can very often blind a guy. To throw a rag may seem fun, yet cause a mate to crush a thumb. So on factory floor, don't be a burk. Keep your tricks for after work. Than yours on Gary. I want to go on it. Hey Gary, you're gonna have to give me a go on this at the weekend. Maybe. I'll see ya. Hey Darren, wait for Tom. Must be looking after him. Make right, sure so you come over with Darren. Bye, Mum. Bye. Come on then, if you're coming. Be Hey. Oh, 
on, how are you? It's on the street. Yeah, I like this, it's quite nice. Get one of these when I'm old. <laughs> oh, what a cool stuff. Come on, let's go, Tom. Deep inside. Had a go at this. Look, over there there's a football. Oh, yeah. Keep an eye on you two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, mate. This place is electrified. Look, just take a look. Oh, that's the frightened little kids. You're right if you don't touch anything. I've seen people working up there. Yeah, well, um, I don't particularly want to mess around with this type of stuff. It's not worth it. Come on, Darren. Andy's going. You're right, Kim. No bottle. If one or two are a bit, uh, you know, but uh, all general, they're okay. You do this all the time. Yeah, well, two or three visits a week. Come on, quickly as you can, please. Uh, Darren, close the door. Right, now if we've got everyone. Now then, for your last science lesson of the term, we've got... Yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah. For your last science lesson of the term, we've got Mr. Jones here from the Electricity Board. Now, he's going to talk to you, show you some videos, so it's another lesson where you do nothing. Yeah. Now, what he has to say is important, so listen. <laughs> Morning. I'm Ken Jones, and as Mrs. Benson said, I work for the Electricity Board. You know, the people who supply all the electricity you lot waste at home. Now, I've been sent along today to tell you about some of the dangerous things people do when they're near electrical installations. In short, I'm here to tell you how to avoid killing yourself. Now then, you look a pretty intelligent bunch. Well, some of you anyway. So you can read this sign then. And these ones? Of course you can. They all warn you about danger. Anyone know what one of these is? Or one of these? Anyone? Mr. Jones? Yes? They're electricity boxes. They're electricity distribution substations. And there's thousands of them up and down the country. There could be one at the end of your road. Now, if you see a sign like this stuck on the gate of a substation, it's pretty clear what it means, isn't it? What do you think it means? It means you shouldn't go inside because it's dangerous. Does everyone agree? It's right if you don't touch your stuff inside. I've seen the workman climbing all over the one near us. But as you might have heard on the news, a young lad broke into a substation yesterday. And just like you, he could read the signs. But I guess he thought, they're for someone else. I'll be okay. And now he's dead. Unfortunately, it's not always the stupid people who get hurt. If you're not using your common sense, an accident can happen to any one of us. And it can happen in an instant. 
I'll show you. We'd gone fishing to try a new carbon fibre pole we got. He said we'd have more luck further down. It wasn't far, so we never bothered taking the pole to bits. Of course we knew about the electric cable. We'd fished there loads of times before. He just didn't think. He forgot the pole was so long. Go! That lad was burnt, knocked unconscious and thrown into the river. All because he hadn't bothered to dismantle the fishing pole. His face and hands are going to be disfigured for life. Can anybody else think of any ways we could touch overhead cables by accident? See? Come on. I told you. Lots of them. You've actually got to touch it to get out. Anybody? Could you do it with a tent pole, you know, like when you go camping? Yes. Now, if you pitch your tent underneath cables, you risk forgetting that they're there. One slip with the pole, it's easily done. And look, there are other ways. People who forget how tall their boat mast is. People who fly kites or toy planes on wires. Put up CB or TV aerials. So, do you all get the idea? Look up and look out. Never go near overhead cables with any long objects. And certainly don't make this kind of mistake. I only ran into the house to answer the phone. I'd left them playing outside on the front lawn. I'll get it. Lady down the road. I just forgot the builders had left their ladder behind. Watch out for the wires. They're only for a telephone, silly. I thought she knew those cables were dangerous. Oh, my God! That's a mistake a lot of people make, thinking the power cables are for the telephone. Now, that little girl was electrocuted by the supply to the house. But what about a big bloke like me? Do you think I could be seriously hurt by the power from an ordinary little socket like this? You need a bit by lightning. <laughs> I mean, we've all got them at home. You at the back, what do you think? Sorry? Have you got the answer? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say it, it would take more than that, sir. Well, you're wrong. Crawler. If you touch the electrical supply in this socket, there's quite enough power to kill me or you at least five times over. So, you've got to treat electricity with respect. Understand how powerful it is. Keep your distance. Or, you might pay the penalty. Like the guys in this next clip. We played there plenty of times before. We found a place to get under the fence. I'd left the door open this time. Everything was busted, the junk. We thought it won't use no more. We were only mucking around smashing things. I hit this little box and took the sparks to the rack. Put it again, put it again! He'd run up behind me. I didn't see him. It jumped out and got him. He was my best mate. Those lads ignored the warning signs. And now someone's got to tell his parents that their son's dead. Your safety is your own responsibility. Any fool can walk into an empty building and get killed. The smart people take care of themselves. Those lads were being stupid. But there's one more incident I'd like you to see. Now just watch this guy. He was stupid. Trying to prove how tough he was. I had a go at them kids. Why do you fly your kites around here, eh? We thought it would be okay, but the wind changed. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. Suppose you never knew about high voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger signs. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. <laughs> He never touched the wire. He never touched it. Well, you don't have to touch. Electricity jumps gaps straight from the electrical equipment through thin air to anything near. You, if you're close, you wouldn't stand a chance. You can't afford to take a chance with electricity because you can be killed just by getting near it. The moment you step past the warning signs, you're walking straight into danger. Any questions? Yeah, what do you do if something gets stuck in the electrical equipment? Phone the police. 
They'll call us and we'll make absolutely sure that all the power's been turned off before we go and get it. Never try to retrieve it yourself. Yes? You said they let go of the kite. Does electricity really travel along long string? Yes, especially if it's wet. How far can electricity jump? The higher the voltage of the electricity, the further it can jump. <laughs> Electric. Oh no, they're all we need. Gary, thank you. This is some bike. What's the problem? It ain't sparking properly. I'm gonna give it a clean. Yeah, be useful for a lot of this. I reckon we should have a whip round tomorrow to get another ball. Well, maybe. Hey you, come with me. Get your hand clear. Might get a bit of a shock. Yeah, some guy was telling us about it today in school. It's powerful stuff, isn't it? Stay there. Oh, look at that. It's only a loose connection. <sighs> Keep look out. Where's Darren taking Tom off to? Oh, I don't know. He wouldn't. Get a football! Ball, 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 ball. No, Darren! Darren? How did he get in? Darren! This way! Tom! Darren! Darren! No, Tom! Any fool could get killed. It's right, you don't touch him, mate. What he has to Please say me. is important. You wouldn't stand a no, chance. Listen. You can't afford to take a chance with electricity because you can be killed just by getting near. You don't have to touch. Electricity jumps gaps. The moment you step past the warning signs, you're walking straight into trouble. Two young brothers died today after they entered an electricity substation to retrieve a football. Each suffered severe electrical burns and both were pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. A spokesman for the electricity board concerned condemned vandals who, it was believed, had broken into the compound earlier. The police report that some local youths are now helping with their inquiries. I used to have a terrible time with my headlights. I found they gave a lot of trouble to people I overtook, and traffic and pedestrians coming towards me. Their effect was quite devastating. 
So I called in my doctor, Gus, the noted brain surgeon. He said there was nothing wrong with the adjustment, and then he gave me a switch that makes my lights more manageable. He calls it a dip switch. Now, when I go out at night, I'm no trouble to anyone. My friends who have cars tell me they have dip switches too. You never know what's round a corner. So don't run. Today, Mrs. Blunders is off to the shops. So naturally, she's got a lot on her mind. After all, she mustn't forget anything. Now, what about a nice bit of fish with white sauce? Oh, no, no, we had fish yesterday. Oh, dear. Oh, look, Wilson's have got a sale. <laughs> That reminds me. Uh, ooh, I must phone the vet. Spaghetti with Brussels sprouts. No, no, I'll, I'll go to the butcher's first. Oh, bother, they're closed. Well, it'll just have to be fish. You'll never notice. You might meet Mrs. Blunders driving down the high street. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Mrs. Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. What's up with you? I'm trying to do some grinding. Uh -huh. Oh, the guard. Well, all right. You're a bit of a mess. Uh -huh. A wheel burst did it. Uh -huh. Well, you can still hear with the other one, can't you? Uh -huh. Yes, it's safe now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What now? Uh -huh. Oh, your hands got pulled in by the wheel, did they? Uh -huh. Serves you right. You should have shoved the rest up close to the wheel, like this. A one-eighth inch gap. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here, leave me alone. I want to get on. Oh, I can't understand. Oh, the goggles. Well, all right. But what's all the fuss? I've never known anyone hurt by one of these. Diamonds are for danger. The diamond sign means a dangerous load. Look out for the diamond sign. They all mean danger. If there's an accident, when you see the diamond sign, keep away. Go to the nearest phone and dial 999. There might be an explosion or fumes that could kill you. Diamonds are for danger. Keep away. The smoke and fumes from a house fire can kill a child in under a minute. Wake up, get a smoke alarm. This new label, which I am proud to wear, has been awarded to me in recognition of my resistance to the dangers of cigarettes and matches. The citation reads, 
meets the requirements for resistance to cigarette and match ignition in the upholstered furniture safety regulations. Not all furniture is entitled to wear it. When you're buying furniture, look for the labels which tell you how resistant it is to fire.
Take a gleam of light. Once upon a time, there was a pond covered with ice. The children who played on it were perfectly safe so long as they followed three simple rules. One, take an adult with you. Two, wait till he's tested the ice. Three, keep away from the center where the ice is thinnest. As for the children who didn't follow these three rules, some of them were never heard of again. So the good children who were left made very certain that there was always a grown-up with them, that he tested the ice first, that they kept near the shore. And as a result, they lived happily ever after. If you suspect something is wrong, don't leave it to someone else. It doesn't cost anything to dial 999. You don't need a card or a coin. Emergency, which service, please? A fire. What exchange number are you calling from? Wellport 21133. Hold the line, I'm connecting you. Don't leave it to someone else. It is very dangerous to cross the road near a zebra crossing. The zigzags mark the danger zone. Unfortunately, some people still forget. So please use the crossing, not the zigzag zone. Can you imagine being frightened of every friendly animal you meet? Imagine rabies in Britain. All dogs will be leashed and muzzled. Foxes will be destroyed. Wildlife at risk. No animal may be moved in or out of the infected area. All cats will be restrained. Just one animal smuggled in could lead to all this. So if you suspect anyone of smuggling, tell the police. If rabies breaks out, any animal found loose will be seized, taken away, and if it is not claimed, destroyed. 
Rabies is a killer. We must keep rabies out. You never know what's round a corner. So don't run. If someone you're not expecting offers you a lift... Hello, Terry. Want a lift home? Not now, Mr. Doug. My mum says I'm not allowed. Say no. Don't go. There's danger on every road. You must stop, stop at the curb. Only cross where you can see the road is clear. Keep looking and listening while you cross. Always use the green cross code. When I was at home, stuck at the old sink, I used to dream about going out to work again and all the different jobs I could do. But when the time came and I did get the chance, I didn't know how to start or where to go. Then one day, on my way to the shops, I was given a government leaflet it told me all about getting a job again, and the tax, and about training for things. All of which proved so interesting to my neighbours and friends that I shall now have to get another one from my local employment exchange. This man is a gambler, an amber gambler. Every time he goes out in his car, he dices with death. An amber gambler can't resist the challenge of the amber light. He always has to be first away, and even when it's perfectly safe to break in time, he prefers to play beat the lights. But every time he gets away with it, he's shortening his odds until... The day he meets all a gambler face to face. Don't be an amber gambler. You might not be the only one around. Next time you go out in the dark, get yourself noticed. Wear something light. Something reflective. A headscarf. A coat, the lighter the better. Or carry a newspaper. Just get yourself noticed. Wear something light. Early morning, evening or late at night. Be safe. Be right. Get yourself noticed. Wear something light. John's School, 306 pupils. Valley Road, 250 pupils. At St. John's, Susan in a hurry. Parked cars and traffic that cannot see her. At Valley Road, Mike heading for home, perhaps for the last time. You can't rely on kids to be careful. So where you see these yellow markings, please don't park. Not even when fetching your child from school. St. John's School, 306 pupils. Valley Road, 250 pupils. Help keep it that way.
The doctors say Sally will be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. We can still hardly believe it. I don't think it's really sunk in yet. Poor Stephen. He's absolutely shattered, as you can imagine, poor boy. And so, of course, the wedding has had to be postponed. They'd planned to do so much after their honeymoon. What with a new house and everything. If you park too close to a junction, you could cause an accident. As this driver makes his turn, his view ahead, just for a moment, is blocked. So please, think before you park, and always leave junctions clear. If you're bitten, or scratched, or even licked by any animal when you're abroad, take no chances. It could have rabies. Wash the wound immediately, and then get urgent medical aid. If you wait until the symptoms of rabies appear, you've left it too late. Rabies kills. If you hear or see something suspicious, something the police should know about, never be afraid to call them, even if you're not sure. They won't mind if you've made a mistake. If you're suspicious, call the police. Don't wait till it's too late. Higher speeds on motorways can fool you. Fool you into thinking you're safe when you're not. Use your mirror often. On the motorway, use your mirror often. For the sake of the driver ahead, and the driver behind, and for your own sake, on motorways, use your mirror often. You never know what's round a corner. So don't run. You should know that you can't drive onto a box junction if you're not able to go straight through. But if you want to turn right, you can wait on the box while oncoming traffic passes or turns, provided your way out to the right is clear. If that exit is blocked, you must wait outside the box. Because if you block the junction, you will be liable to a heavy fine. Oh, I've been pinched. securely and prevent crime. Don't let them get away with it. Morning. Do early. You may think your child is safe. Eggs. But please, if he's under five, make sure he can't get out into the street. These are the danger signs. A door that isn't shut properly. An everyday distraction. A gate left open. A four-year-old who finds the street a great adventure. <coughs> Remember the danger signs around your home and make sure the under five stay inside.
Don't dazzle. Dip your headlights. When you tuck your children in at night, are you putting them to bed or laying them to rest? If inhaled, the smoke from a house fire could kill a small child in under a minute. They'll rely on you to wake them up and get them out. What are you relying on? Wake up. Get a smoke alarm. These are the parts of the world where malaria is common and where a traveler runs the risk of a bite from infected mosquitoes. Even if you once lived in one of these countries, you may have lost any immunity after only a few years away. And children born in Britain won't be immune at all. So, before traveling to hot countries, ask your doctor about anti-malarial tablets. Beware malaria! Vandalism. We've all got our own ideas why they do it. Kids mostly. Could be yours. Could be mine. She doesn't like my haircuts. She says my friends are lousy. And then she said, it's getting light. Can't miss me, Azzy, Azzy, Do you know where your lad's going tonight? Her life is in danger. Would you know what to do? If she's near the bank, try to reach her. Use something to make your reach longer. Or if she's further out, throw her something that floats. Or test the depth and wade out to her. Or if there's a boat near, use that. Don't risk capsizing. Approach her, stern first. Reach, throw, wade, row. You can save a life without risking your own. The ways of the farmer have changed greatly over the years, and so have his pieces of machinery. But he still works from dawn to dusk and requires a good night's sleep. Noise at night travels far. It also travels quite away during the day. roads have special dangers. Care and patience are needed when passing farm animals or bulky, slow-moving farm machinery. Careless parking may block the entrance to fields or farm buildings. So go carefully on country roads and park with consideration. Remember, too, that loudly played radios are annoying both to the farmer and other visitors to the countryside. Most dogs enjoy a day in the country. But their exuberance is not always appreciated by the locals. Calves and lambs are often born dead because their mothers have been frightened by dogs. Now this farm dog is trained not to chase the animals, so train your dog to obey you. If he doesn't obey, put him on a lead when near farm animals. People who let their dogs go berserk in the country are often not much better themselves. They have no respect for the farmer's property, his gates and walls. Public footpaths across farmland are there for your use, 
but to stray from them causes unnecessary damage to crops, including grass. The hedges and walls in the country are not just for decoration. They are functional ones to keep sheep and cattle safe and away from all the crops the farmer grows. The farmer often has to leave his machinery unattended. It is costly equipment, so never interfere with it. Unlocked barns and buildings house seeds and fertilizers and other valuable equipment. So please, leave the farmer's things alone. Respect his way of life, his animals, crops and machinery. Protect also the wildlife of the countryside and don't follow the example of the fox. Things that start off in an innocent way can cause a lot of harm. If we do this, the trees will suffer. Trees are valuable as well as beautiful. Their health and beauty will also suffer if blossom is torn off or branches are broken. If wild plants are uprooted, they will soon become rare. Leave them for others to see. Let birds and wild animals lead their lives undisturbed. If it is necessary for you to light a fire to cook, make sure you keep it under proper control. Fire is lethal when left to its own devices. It will destroy all in its path. Moors, woodlands, young plantations and wildlife farmlands and livestock. All can be lost in a short time through carelessness. On a fine summer's day, besides the smoke from your fire, other strange things take to the air. Litter. A good job tins can't fly. But they do. And so do some bottles. Rivers and streams are good landmarks from up here. And you'd be surprised at some of the things we see. Sheep and cattle often get hurt by broken glass or by tins. And that harvester could be put out of action by a broken bottle. Remember too that plastic bags are dangerous to animals. They may suffocate if help is not at hand. The countryside is not provided with litter bins. So follow the country code and take your litter home. Don't fool around with fireworks. Now, I'm going to show you three things and you've got to tell me what you do with them. Number one, a pint of... Well, you seem to know what to do with that one, all right. Number two, a handkerchief. Excellent. Remember, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Now, number three, a bowl of disinfectant. Hey, you don't drink it, man. That's for the soiled handkerchief, which is full of germs. You put the handkerchief into the disinfectant, which kills the germs and so stops the spread of infection. Now, let's get this quite clear. You sneeze into the handkerchief and then put the handkerchief into a bowl of disinfectant to kill the germs. Not in with the family's washing. Got it? Sure? Good. Remember, don't spread germs. You never know what's round a corner. So don't run. And now, here is the nine o'clock news. <laughs> Time to go to work, George. Yes, Bill. If you were George and Lil, which house would you choose to burgle? This will do, George. Who would have told me that? Huh? When you're out for the evening, do yourself a favour. Leave a light on in a downstairs room. It could stop George and Lil calling round. Good night's work, eh, Lil? Hey, Lil, we've been done! George, you should have left the light on! Yeah, there's some funny people about. 
Oh. Don't forget, leave a light on in the downstairs room. Oh. There's some funny people about. Industry needs power. So do hospitals. So do essential services. At home, you could get by with less. So switch off some power. Now. Power is short. Do you really need it? Others do. Do you really need it? Others do. Switch off some power in your home now. Yeah. 